people die. No, it, it's true. If this is brand new information to you, then please accept my sincerest apologies. You idiot. But since death is an as of yet unavoidable part of life, then it's important for movies to show this as well. The operative word there, by the way, is show. Unfortunately, a lot of directors tend to simply forget that old adage of show, don't tell, and opt to simply talk about a character dying rather than actually demonstrate the grisly business on screen. With that in mind, I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are nine incredibly important movie characters who were killed off screen. Number nine, The Kraken. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. The most impressive and imposing of all the creatures in the never-ending Pirates franchise, Davy Jones's beastly tentacle tickler provides the most exciting moments in the second installment of the series, Dead Man's Chest. Since the last time we see the creature, it's dragging Captain Jack Sparrow down to the depths of the ocean and into Davy Jones's locker, one would safely assume that Jack would get a chance at revenge in the next movie. But he doesn't. And instead, we're treated to an incredibly brief scene where Sparrow and Barbosa encounter the dead carcass of the Kraken on the beach. Jones himself had to put down the monster under the orders of Lord Cutler Beckett, which we never got to see. Number 8. Tank. The Matrix Reloaded. The first Matrix film was a bit of a bloodbath for the human characters, with the only good guys to make it out of it alive being Neo, Trinity, Morpheus, and Tank. And yet one of those four never made it to the sequel, and a throwaway line in The Matrix Reloaded tells us that Tank died and his duties have been given to his brother-in-law, Link. In one of many instances of real-life meddling and the good intentions of screenwriters, it turns out the guy who played Tank in the first Matrix, Marcus Chong, got a little too big for his britches. You could say his ego swelled to the size of a tank, ha ha, and demanded the same salary as Lawrence Fishburne for the sequel. The Wachowskis responded by showing him just how replaceable he was. Number 7. Xander Cage Triple X, State of the Union. The offspring of Sly Stallone and a potato, Vin Diesel is a success story for the ages, having overcome the stigma of being sired by a. a herbaceous perennial. And yet here he is in Triple X, a film franchise where he pretends to be James Bond if James Bond listened to Green Day, swore at his mother, and had a tattoo that read, Bad Boy. While times have certainly changed with the recent introduction of a new series entry, this wasn't always the case, and in an effort to keep the gravy train rolling, Diesel was replaced by Ice Cube, and they killed the former protagonist off via an off-screen explosion. A fitting tribute? I don't care. Number 6. Doughboy. Boys in the Hood. Did I sound white enough reading that? I can do better. Boys in the Hood? To add a question mark on the end there, how is that? Depicting the less than ideal life of those unfortunate enough to live in South Central Los Angeles, the almost inevitability of death is what makes Ice Cube's character, Doughboy, such an integral part of the story. He fully embraces the violent lifestyle, brandishing his handgun to end arguments and refusing to back down from confrontation. After getting revenge for the heart-wrenching murder of his brother, we find out in the epilogue that Doughboy was then murdered two weeks later. In a rare instance of off-screen death proving effective, his passing manages to hit hard even in a caption. Number 5. Sarah Connor Terminator 3 – Rise of the Machines In the first, and best, two Terminator films, the story revolves around Sarah Connor and her evolution from a vulnerable damsel in distress to a certified badass, militant heroine. The character quickly stole the show from the titular Terminator, while Linda Hamilton revolutionized the role of women in action movies. She wasn't written off in the most incredible way, however, as in Terminator 3 – Rise of the Machines, the audience is told that somewhere between the second and third film, Sarah succumbed to leukemia. Cancer is obviously awful, but there was something very unsatisfying about her dying off-screen in such a fashion after previously surviving a shiv from a Terminator. Plus, her son John was a bit rubbish. I suppose you could call him a shit human resistance leader for wackers. Hashtag shit human resistance leader for wackers. Number 4. Newt, Hicks and Bishop Alien 3 on a cinematic level, the sudden, very undramatic deaths of Ripley's surrogate family, Marine leader Hicks, traumatized young girl Newt, and android Bishop were probably necessary to move the story forward. After all, David Fincher's brutally dismal world as portrayed in Alien 3 wouldn't have allowed for a happy ragtag family story. Still, the impact of their loss was pretty much nullified by the fact that we didn't even see their faces for a single frame. It's heartbreaking to see the news of their deaths delivered to Ripley, but it would have been ten times more powerful had they made it past the opening credits and we'd been allowed to witness their deaths firsthand. Number 3. Llewellyn Moss – No Country for Old Men Llewellyn is a Vietnam vet who looks to outsmart the sociopathic hitman 
Anton Chigurh, sent to track him down for stealing money after coming across a drug deal gone awry. Moss is the one shining ray of hope in this bleak movie, the only one the audience can really root for. All we want to see is a final confrontation between the two, hopefully with Llewellyn coming out on top, but we get none of that. And instead, he's killed by a seemingly random group of Mexican cartel members. We find out about it just as Tommy Lee Jones's character does, finding Llewellyn dead on the floor of a hotel room. Suddenly, the hope is gone, everything is futile. Once more, embrace the darkness. Number 2. Adrian. Rocky Balboa. The father of Vin Diesel, sliced alone is a success story for the ages, having overcome the stigma of f***ing a herbaceous perennial. And here he is, in Rocky, a film franchise where he pretends to be a boxer and where he doesn't really need prosthetics to represent boxing injuries, as I'm fairly sure he looks like that all the time. In the story of Rocky Balboa, his wife Adrian might just be the most essential part of his journey, as she did the most to help him become an actual human being once the gloves were off. After all of that, though, Sylvester Stallone decided that the best way to make Adrian a pivotal character in the long-awaited Rocky VI was to kill her off a few years before the events of the movie take place. What did she fall victim to? I shit you not, according to Stallone, it was woman cancer. Good stuff, mate. Number 1. Cyclops – X-Men The Last Stand Even casual fans of the X-Men know that, along with Wolverine, Cyclops is pretty much the de facto leader of the group, and one of the most important characters in the series. So when Scott Summers dies in the third film of the original trilogy, you'd expect it to be an epic, stupefyingly heroic moment. But no, that's not the case. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Cyclops' death couldn't have been less heroic or epic if he had actually tripped over an empty microwave meal box for one and hit his head on the corner of his boxed body pillow a bit too hard. That was very specific. So the man with the world's most chronic case of red eye goes to the lake where his lover died, comes face to face with the suddenly not dead Jean Grey, and the two suck face for a brief, passionate moment. Oh, that's. That's nice. Oh, f me, is she disintegrating him? Wolverine and Storm go to check on the situation, only to find Cyclops' glasses. Poof. That's all, chaps. And that's our list. Are there any pressing off screen deaths we missed? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even follow me here on Twitter if you fancy. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.